Welcome to the WeRPN webinar on personal protective equipment and COVID-19. Information on this presentation is accurate as of April 3rd, 2020. Information on PPE and COVID-19 may change. Please check back on the WeRPN and Public Health Ontario websites frequently for updates. A point of care risk assessment assesses the task, the patient, and the environment, and is completed by nurses before every patient interaction in order to determine whether there is risk of being exposed to an infection. Performing a point of care risk assessment is the first step in routine practices, which are to be used with all patients for all care and for all interactions. A point of care risk assessment will help determine the correct PPE required to protect you in your interaction with the patient and patient environment. Completing a point of care risk assessment will assist to determine whether there is risk of being exposed to COVID-19. It will also assist to determine the appropriate equipment needed to provide care. The following questions are suggestions and do not replace screening questions your employer has put in place. One, do you have any of the following symptoms? Fever or feverish, new or existing cough, or difficulty breathing? Two, have you traveled outside of Canada within the last 14 days? Three, have you had close contact with a confirmed or probable COVID-19 case? Four, have you had close contact with a person with acute respiratory illness who has been outside of Canada in the last 14 days? You must also assess whether there's a probability of routine or emergent aerosol generating medical procedures being required for the patient. If you determine, based on your professional and clinical judgment, that health and safety measures may be required in the delivery of care to the patient, then you are required to have access to the appropriate health and safety control measures, including an N95 respirator. Your employer cannot unreasonably deny access to the appropriate PPE. At a minimum, contact and droplet precautions must be used by nurses for all interactions with suspected, presumed, or confirmed COVID-19 patients. Contact and droplet precautions include gloves, face shields or goggles, gowns, and surgical or procedural masks. When aerosol-generating medical procedures are required, N95 respirators or approved equivalent or better protection must be used by all healthcare workers in the room where aerosol-generating medical procedures are being performed, are frequent or probable, or with any intubated patients. Effective use of PPE protects nurses, patients, and healthcare facilities from the spread of COVID-19. Hand hygiene should be performed before putting on PPE. PPE should be put on in the following sequence. Gown, mask, eye protection, and finally, gloves. This image shows the recommended steps for putting on PPE and is from Public Health Ontario. Please see the WeRPN COVID-19 webpage to download copies for your personal use or at your own place of employment. When removing PPE, the correct sequence is important because you are effectively contaminated. The sequence is gloves. Hand hygiene should be performed after removing them. Then gown, eye protection, and finally mask. Hand hygiene should be performed again once all PPE has been disposed of. This image shows the recommended steps for removing PPE and is from Public Health Ontario. Please see the WeRPN COVID-19 webpage to download copies for your personal use or at your place of employment. For novel pathogens such as novel coronavirus, MERS-CoV, or avian influenza, the recommended additional precautions are airborne, droplet, and contact precautions. These require you to wear the following personal protective equipment. Gown, fit-tested, seal-checked N95 respirator, 
face shield, and gloves. When donning PPE, perform hand hygiene for 15 seconds. Apply one to two pumps of alcohol-based hand rub to the palms of dry hands. Rub hands together, rubbing palm to palm, in between and around the fingers, on the back of the hands, as well as the fingertips and nail beds. Continue rubbing until hands are completely dry. Hand hygiene using alcohol-based hand rub is the preferred method. Use soap and water only when hands are visibly soiled. Tie back long hair if applicable. Do not bring unnecessary equipment in the room. Inspect your equipment for any damage prior to donning each piece. Clean shaven, don your gown. Tie around the neck and around the waist. Secure gown using a bow that can easily be untied. Ensure all clothing is covered by gown. Lift your chin and place your fit tested N95 respirator over your nose and mouth. Stretch the bottom strap over your head and place it on the back of your neck. Ensure strap is on bare skin only, no loose hairs. Place the top strap on the crown of your head. Ensure that the straps are not overlapping or crossed. Check if mask is properly formed to face. Ensure no fold by running fingers along the edges of the mask. Mold the metal nose strip to conform to the shape of your nose. Do this by placing both your middle fingers at the bridge of your nose and use your index finger to press along the edge of mask along from the sides of your nose into the cheeks, creating a good seal. Repeat pressing index fingers with pressure especially alongside of the nose. Perform a seal check by placing your hands at the side of your face at eyebrow level without touching the mask. Exhale quickly once to check if air escapes the mask and hits the palms of hands. If you feel leakage, readjust the fit of your N95 respirator and perform another seal check. Don your face shield by placing the strap at the back of your head. Ensure that the top of the face shield is resting in the middle of your forehead. Put on your gloves. Ensure that gloves are placed over the cuff of the gown so that the skin of your wrist is not exposed. Perform a final personal protective equipment check prior to going into the room. Alternatively, have a colleague perform the final check. After entering the patient's room, keep hands away from your face. Only open one door at a time to maintain negative pressure in the room. The doffing process poses the highest risk of transmission to healthcare workers. Make sure to take your time removing your personal protective equipment. A guide will be posted in the anteroom outlining the steps of PPE removal for staff. Please refer to this guide when doffing your PPE. Step into the anteroom and ensure the door is closed behind you. Remove gloves using the glove to glove and skin to skin technique. Place in the garbage. You may perform hand hygiene at this time if there is any concern your hands became contaminated during glove removal. Next, untie the gown around your waist and at the neck. Grab the straps from the back of the neck and slowly pull the gown forward and peel it away from you, touching only the inside of the gown. Be careful not to let the gown touch your clothes. Roll the gown into a ball, place the reusable gown in the laundry hamper. If you are using a disposable gown, dispose of it in the garbage. Perform hand hygiene for 15 seconds. Remove the face shield by grabbing the strap at the back of your head. Slowly remove it down and away from your face using the sniff position. Bend forward, eyes forward, chin out. Dispose of the face shield into the garbage. Remove your N95 mask without touching the exterior part of the mask, again using the sniff position. Remove one strap at a time, starting with the bottom strap first and removing the top strap last. Remove the straps by grasping them from the back of your head. Dispose of the N95 respirator in the garbage. Perform hand hygiene. Rooms with anterooms are the preferred accommodation for patients under airborne droplet and contact precautions. If there is no anteroom, remove all PPE inside the patient room at the doorway, with the exception of the N95 respirator, which must be removed in the hallway. There are some things you can do to reduce risks to you and your family after returning from work to home. Please note this is anecdotal information and opinion and is not based on scientific research. 
Start by putting your clothes in a hamper with a garbage bag just inside the home's entrance. Clothes worn outside, which may have come in contact with the coronavirus, should be placed inside the garbage bag. Throw them directly in the wash on hot or warm if you can. Shoes can be placed in another garbage bag or left outside the home if possible. Clean keys, cell phones, and other items you've been carrying with disinfecting wipes. Door handles and light switches near the entrance should also be disinfected. And shower immediately upon returning home from work. While it is common to feel scared, stressed, or anxious, your well-being and emotional resilience is essential to our patients as we work to help our community through the COVID-19 pandemic. It's important for you to schedule time to de-stress and engage in activities that bring you joy, even if it is just for a moment. A few minutes of break during a shift can be calming. Even a five-minute walk can improve energy and focus. Exercise, limiting alcohol, and caffeine consumption are also recommended. Getting news and information from reputable sources is important, but you should limit the amount of news consumed as it can become overwhelming. Instead, focus on what you can control. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water or with an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Try to maintain a six-foot distance from someone who is coughing or sneezing to prevent the spread of germs and refrain from touching your face. While you may feel like you're constantly supporting others, it's important that you seek out those who you can fall back on to. Share your concerns with friends, family, and colleagues, and problem solve together. You can be there for coworkers and trust that they will be there in return. Finally, find novel ways to connect with others during this time of social distancing. Call, video chat, and reach out on social media. As the voice of Ontario's registered practical nurses, we RPN showcases the critical role that RPNs play in Ontario's healthcare system. We establish strong relationships with government and key decision makers to make sure the perspectives and concerns of RPNs on key professional practice and health policy issues are heard. On April 2nd, we RPN urged Ontario's Chief Medical Officer of Health to clarify a directive on PPE for nurses in hospitals. We were very concerned to learn that a recently released government directive for nurses in public hospitals applied only to Ontario Nurses Association members. We RPN has written an open letter to the Chief Medical Officer of Health requesting urgent clarification of this directive that has the unintended consequence of prioritizing the protection of one nurse over another. That ultimately puts thousands of RPNs, as well as the patients they care for, at risk. Whether you need a hand, a shoulder, or an ear, we're here for RPNs across the province. If you have any questions or have a request for WeRPN for other resources you would like to see us offer, please contact us at info at wearpn.com or phone us at 905-602-4664. Our office in Mississauga will be closed until further notice in response to the evolving situation with COVID-19. With our team working from home, we remain committed to providing ongoing support to our members during this time. At this time, our hours remain the same, Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., Saturday and Sunday we are closed.